Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson 2, Introduction to Negative Numbers. This is great. You've been learning about numbers since you were in kindergarten, even before kindergarten, right? Your parents were teaching you how to count, right? All of that. And little by little, even after you learned how to count, you learned about other numbers like fractions and decimals, right? And today, for the first time, you get introduced to a brand new type of number called negatives, okay? Um, it's not gonna be the end, right? There's gonna be other numbers you'll be introduced to. Eventually, you'll be introduced to irrational numbers. If you go far enough in math, you may even get introduced to imaginary numbers. Imagine that. But today, we're going to be learning about negative numbers. So let's get right into it with a practical example. Now, if you're from Southern California, you might have no connection to a problem like this, but I hope at least you've still looked at a thermometer before. So let's take a look at a practical and very cold example. Exercise number one. The two thermometers below show temperatures on a mild day and a cold day. Answer the following questions based on the scale shown. Letter A, what is the Fahrenheit temperature on a mild day? Or on the mild day, there could, you could be lots of different Fahrenheit temperatures on a mild day. All right, so I know it's a little bit probably difficult to see, but take your best estimate of what the Fahrenheit, F, not Celsius, no C, just F, but what the Fahrenheit temperature is on the mild day. Pause the video now and see if you can figure that out. All right, well, it may not be completely and utterly obvious, and that's pretty much the case whenever you have a thermometer that looks like this, but it's somewhere around 64, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, again, a little bit, little bit difficult, but if you put either 64 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 degrees Fahrenheit, I think either one of those is completely okay. All right, now, letter B, very important, right? On the cold day, is the temperature above or below zero degrees Fahrenheit? By how many degrees is it above or below? So now we're working on that cold day, all right? I'd like you to take a look at that, determine whether the temperature is above or below zero degrees Fahrenheit, and then how much it's above or below. Pause the video now. All right, well, here's the zero, right? These temperatures are above zero, and these temperatures are below zero. So the temperature is definitely below zero, and it looks like we have to go 20 degrees below zero in order to get our temperature. So it's below zero by 20 degrees. All right. Now, the whole thrust of the lesson. Letter C, express the Fahrenheit temperature on the cold day by using a negative number. Well, the plain fact is, this thing actually has negatives attached to it. And the whole point of negative numbers, at least today, is to give us measurements relative to zero that could be less than zero, could be below zero. So 20 degrees below zero, we then designate as negative 20. Now I realize that the negative symbol I realize the negative symbol looks a lot like a subtraction symbol. That's not by accident, okay? In fact, it is a subtraction symbol that is made slightly smaller. And the idea is that it tells us that a number is somehow less than zero, below zero, to the left of zero, something like that. That's the idea of negative numbers, is to give us a sense of a number that could somehow be before zero. And temperature is a great example of that, really because, you know, what is zero degrees Fahrenheit? It's kind of this sort of arbitrary and extremely cold temperature. The same thing is true for Celsius, right? Zero degrees Celsius, which we weren't working in here, that's the temperature at which water freezes, all right? And therefore, we could certainly have temperatures that are below that temperature because certainly, you know, we get temperatures below freezing. All right, let's move on and take a look at another temperature example. All right, negative numbers allow us to think about quantities that are below or less than zero. Exercise number two. What is the temperature shown on the Celsius thermometer? Express it both in terms of degrees below zero and using a negative number. 
All right, pause the video now and fill in these two blanks. All right, and you will hear weather forecasters use both of these terms, right? Here's our zero mark on the scale, right? All of these temperatures up here, on the sunny side of things, are warmer. All these temperatures down here are less than zero, you know, symbolized by the, the snow symbol. It looks like this temperature is 10 degrees below zero. And oftentimes you'll hear, you'll hear weather forecasters, they say things like, oh, the low today is going to be 10 degrees below zero. On the other hand, they might also say, that the low will be negative 10 degrees Celsius. Again, if you live in a warm climate, you know, Florida, Southern California, places like that, you probably never even see temperatures that are below zero, all right? But they do exist. Again, think about it this way, right? In your freezer, like water is going to freeze at zero degrees Celsius, all right? And most freezers are actually well below the freezing point of water, otherwise things like, like ice cream get all mushy, trust me. I've had a bad refrigerator before. All right, let's keep working with these negative numbers. Now, again, negative numbers are sort of positional, if you will, as are positive numbers. And now, again, you really probably never use the term positive numbers. Positive numbers are the numbers that you've always kind of thought of in the, in the past, right? Oh, I've got five apples. The number five is a positive number, okay? Negative numbers are kind of positional. Where are we relative to zero? Positive numbers, as you've seen on number lines, go off to the right of zero, and now we're finally going to extend the number line to the left of zero to include the negative numbers, right? So positive one, positive two, positive three, positive four, positive five, versus negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. These negative numbers are really just telling us, oh, we're to the left of zero on a number line instead of being to the right of zero. In terms of plotting numbers, it's exceptionally easy, right? So for instance, I mean, obviously in exercise three, it says for each of the following numbers, plot it on the number line shown and label it with its letter. All right, well, that's, that, that's fair enough. I mean, plotting A equals six is a piece of cake, right? That's just like what we've been doing all along. So we're just gonna put A right here. But negative six, this is exactly the same way, right? All the way to here is negative five, one more is negative six. Now it's really important because it could be very easy to look at this number line very quickly and go up, oh, there's the negative five, so that must be negative six. We're so used to going to the right, right? So, oh, negative five, negative six, no, right? Negatives are gonna go this way, positives are gonna go that way. Pause the video now and plot the remaining four numbers on this number line. All right, and you might have noticed, for each one that's positive, I have the exact same number, except it's negative version. So C equals nine, that's easy enough, because it's way out here, and, C, and D equals negative nine, right out here. E equals 3.5, that's a little more challenging, because it's right between three and four is right here, and negative 3.5 will be right here. All right. The negative portion of the number line works identical to the positive portion, and in fact, right, if I look at things like letter C at nine and letter D at negative nine, what I see is that those two numbers are exactly the same distance from zero, one of them is simply to the right of the origin, and the other one is simply to the left of the origin. And that's what negative numbers do for us. They allow us to position things less than zero. And temperature is, again, a fantastic example of that. Let's keep going. Now, just like we worked at in the last lesson, of course, negative numbers can have decimals, they can have fractions, and we can blow up the number line so that we can plot negative and positive numbers that have decimal quantities. So let's take a look at that in exercise number four. The portion of the number line between negative two and positive two is shown below. Plot each of the following numbers on the line and label it with its letters. All right, so let's do the first two together, then have you work on the other ones on your own. 
Letter A, 1.2, this is nothing different than what we did in the last exercise. Each one of these little tick marks goes by 0 0.1. So here I am at 1, 1.1, 1.2, there it is, right? So there is A at 1.2. Now on the other hand, all right, B at negative 1.7. Well, there's negative 1.5, and now we have to be careful. Negative 1.6, negative 1.7. It's very important not to move to the right and think that negative 1.7 is somewhere like here, okay? So now, pause the video, take a couple minutes, and plot the rest of these numbers. All right, well, 0 0.3, not too bad. Here we're at 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. All right, negative 0 0.2. Well, here we're at 0, here's negative 0.1, here's negative 0.2. All right, E at 1.9, no problem. We got 1 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 1.7, 1 1.8, 1.9. And F at negative 1.3, again, here we're at negative 1, negative 1.1, negative 1.2, negative 1.3. And there we are. All right. Every positive number that's out there has kind of an equivalent negative number that's on the exact opposite side of the number line. All right. So if you can plot something like 1.72, you should be able to plot something like negative 1.72. Let's keep going on this. All right, problem number six. For each fraction below, change it to a mixed number and plot its approximate location on the number line shown, label with its letter. So again, this is important. Just as we can have negative decimals, we can also have negative fractions. So let's do the first two together, then have you do the last two on your own. Now again, 19 thirds, this is no different than what we've kind of been playing around with. We might wanna change that into a mixed number, okay? So three goes into 19 six times for 18 with a remainder of one. So 19 thirds is six and one third, and that would be maybe right around there, right? A little bit bigger than six, but definitely less than seven, all right? six and one third. On the other hand, negative 11 fourths. Well, the best way to look at this is to look at it as, well, I've got the negative, then four goes into 11 two times, that gives me eight, then I have three remaining, so negative 11 quarters is negative two and three quarters. Now again, negative two and three quarters would be identical to finding two and three quarters, right? Two and three quarters would be between two and three, and a little bit closer to three, right? Because three quarters is bigger than one half. Negative two, negative three, so negative two and three quarters would be almost to negative three, right? And it might be right there. So I've got my negative two, my negative three, and my negative two and three quarters. All right, why don't you go ahead and try to plot C and D as accurately as you can. All right, well, let's take a look. Letter C, 17 halves. We can divide two into 17 eight times. There'll be a remainder of one, so we have eight and one half. That will be right about here. All right, 23 thirds. Well, three goes into 23 seven times. That's 21. And then we have a remainder of two, so we have negative seven and two thirds. Now again, this might be the hardest one to actually plot, but here we've got negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight. It's gotta be between negative seven and negative eight, and it should be a little bit closer to negative eight than negative seven, because two thirds is greater than one half. So negative six, negative seven, negative eight. Here might be negative seven and two thirds. All right, that's it. Not that hard. And again, the idea is, right, negative numbers are, act just like positive numbers. They just happen to be before zero, or less than zero, or to the left of zero, or below zero. Something like that, all right? Let's wrap this up. All right, so today, for the first time, you dealt with negative numbers. And again, mostly, 
We use negative numbers not to represent how much of something we have because it's hard to have something like negative five cookies. You know, that's just not the case. On the other hand, if there's some kind of natural zero point, like let's say the, the height of the ground, that's zero, and maybe there's an object above the ground that might have a positive height, then maybe an object below the ground would have a negative height, right? So maybe you'd say that you know, that hole is, you know, negative three feet above the ground. You probably wouldn't say that, but certainly it makes a lot of sense in the context of temperature. Ah, the temperature outside is negative five degrees, which just means five degrees below zero. We're going to work a lot more with negative numbers, obviously, in this unit because it's the entire theme of the unit, all right? So you'll get used to them a lot more. For now, I want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.